Good evening, and welcome to this week's edition of The Message. I am your host, Donatus King. We'll spend this next hour with one purpose in mind, and that one purpose is delivering the message that God is almighty. Everything that ever was, is now, or ever will be, was made by God. Everything that ever happened, is happening right now, or ever will happen, was made to happen by God. God has a master plan for all time and all creation. God is almighty. The message is brought to you by, is produced by the Society of Knowledge Incorporated. The Society is an interdenominational, religious, spiritual organization. Our members come from various different religious and spiritual backgrounds. We have various different religious and spiritual beliefs. Although we come from different backgrounds and have different beliefs, there's one belief that we share. There's one piece of knowledge that we hold in common. And that's the knowledge that there is a being. By no matter what name we may have been taught to call that being, by no matter what name we may have come to know that being, whether that name be God, Allah, Yahweh, Jesus, Buddha, Jehovah, by no matter what name, we know that there is a being that possess not some of the power, not most of the power, but all of the power. That's the reason we do this show, and the only reason we do this show is to deliver the message that that being that personally I call God, that that being is indeed almighty. Today is October the 18th, 2018. I remind you that fact because tonight, as we are on most Thursdays, we are live. And I remind you of that fact because this show is an open discussion. It's a two-way conversation. For those of you that are watching, uh, you see the telephone number that's on your screen, and that's 504-483-3336. I invite you to use that number, call in, and join the discussion. For those of you uh, that, are, that usually uh, tune in on Facebook, uh, I understand that we are having... I understand that we are having some difficulties right now uh, with our Facebook connection. So we're just going to continue on, and uh, hopefully before the end of the broadcast, we'll be able to, to get that straight. And those of you that are, again, those of you that are, are watching, uh, yeah, you see me, I'm trying to mess with the controls now as I speak, trying to see if we could get... Uh, if we can get this done, and it looks like we have, we have not looks like we are having some some difficulty here with our Facebook connection, so I'm just gonna I'm going to play around with it just for just for a another minute, and while you are, are watching, as I say, this is this is live TV. And I'm taking the time to do this because I do want to let our let our Facebook viewers I do want to let our Facebook viewers actually participate in our discussion tonight. So give me uh, all right. For some reason, we're still not we're still not able to to log in. So. That that is again some of the some of the uh, great part about doing live TV. So we can't get our Facebook tonight. Uh, we will have it uploaded. The studio version will have that uploaded, uh, hopefully by the end of tomorrow. But let's go. Let's go on with our show. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with our show, you know we start out with our announcements. Then we go into our testimonies. After our testimonies, we go into our religious spiritual uh, discussion section. And uh, let's see, we have one more, one more thing here that we're trying. Okay, all right. Well, this is this is going to turn into a lesson. In technology tonight. Okay, so let's see if we let's see if we can just work through this because it's showing that we're not getting. It's showing that we're not getting uh, a connection. 
All right, it's showing that we're not getting connection. Let's see if we have. Let's see if we have any uh, any luck. Now I'm getting this. All right, let's see. Uh, oh. And I see. I, I think I see the problem that we have a a software update. And anybody that's familiar with technology, when you have a software update, that's something that can really throw you off completely. So that's what we're experiencing right now. So let's go right into our religious spiritual study, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, coming out of the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21. And tonight, we will begin a multi-week, a multi-week discussion on the history of Christianity, the history of Christianity. Our words of inspiration tonight will come out of the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 14 to 25, and then we'll go into, we'll go into chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. Uh, announcements to www.godisalmighty.org. I invite you to lock that in, lock that into your web browser. In 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can visit that website, and there are links to all of our social media outlets. Uh, there are links to our there are links to our Twitter account, our Facebook account, our Instagram, YouTube. Okay, so just lock that link. In Rock of Ages Ministries International, I invite you to lock that in. That's our good friend, uh, Apostle Ronnie Bailey. Uh, and the Apostle, he's doing some great work not only here in the uh, city of New Orleans area, but also, also doing some good work in the Lafayette area. He's actually located in the, uh, his ministry is actually located in the Lafayette area, but he does a lot of work here in the New Orleans area. Hey, let's, uh, all right, uh, New Orleans Peacekeepers, they're operating not only, again, they're operating not only here in the New Orleans area, but also in the, uh, there are several other cities throughout the country, and the Peacekeepers, what they do is they come out, they go to uh, different locations, uh, people that are having disagreements, that are having what we call beefs, uh, and they go out and try to help folks resolve those uh, disputes without resorting to violence. Uh, call 311 uh, in New Orleans area, 311 from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. for free smoke detectors. As always, uh, we remind you to check your back seats. Uh, make sure that you don't have any, any children that are in, in your back seats. Uh, we know that we know that uh, in the New Orleans area, we have a lot of, of folks, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that we're having some problems, actually, with, uh, with our Internet connections. So I don't know what's happening with that, but it looks like we are having some problems with our Internet, with our internet connection. Uh, October, those of you that are watching, uh, watching TV now, you see that I have on a pink tie, and that pink tie is in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, this is October, and uh, there is Breast Cancer Awareness. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so I, I invite all of you to uh, go out and take care of yourself. Uh, I think after the age of 35 or 40, uh, we should start getting, getting uh, ladies to talk to your doctors, and men also talk to your, your doctors, about getting screened for breast cancer. And while we're talking about it, not only, uh, even though this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I uh, want to remind all of our friends, uh, all of our viewers, that prostate cancer is also something that men should be aware of. And a few weeks ago, we had uh, Chief Chaville on our show, and he talked to us and shared some information about uh, prostate cancer. So, you know, 
just whether it's breast cancer, prostate cancer, make sure you talk to your physician, get checked, take care of your health. Uh, Tricentennial Soul, an event that's going to be held at Xavier University Center, the McCaffrey Ballroom, the third floor, and that's going to be featuring Deacon John Moore, uh, Dr. Michael White, uh, Oprah Creole, Cynthia Gertley, Don Vappy, Holly's Hot 8 Brass Band, and that is free. Okay, that's going to be at Xavier uh, University Center, the third floor, and that is Sunday, November the 4th, 2018. Uh, 3 p.m. and is hosted and sponsored by Dr. Michael White, okay, the Tricentennial Soul, Xavier University Center. Uh, this past Sunday, uh, my auntie, uh, Elise Merkadel Brown, transitioned. Her services will be tomorrow, Friday, October 19th, 2018. Uh, the visitation starts at 9, the Mass is at 10, and that'll be at St. Peter Claver Church, 1923, St. Philip Street, here in the city of New Orleans, and the interment will follow at Mount Olivet Cemetery. A my Aunt Elise Mercadell Brown. A joyful celebration of the ordination of a bishop, and that will be uh, it'll begin October 26th, and it'll go October 26th, 27th, and the 28th, and that will be uh, at Imani Temple, number 49, in Lafayette, Louisiana. And what will happen is going to be the Lafayette province of the African-American Catholic Congregation uh, joyfully invites you to attend the sacred ordination of John W. Milton, Esquire, theological minister as bishop and presider of the Lafayette province uh, with the imposition of hands and the invocation of the Holy Spirit by Archbishop G. Augustus Stallings Jr., patriarch and founder. Uh, and that, it'll, that will be on Saturday, October 27, 2018 at 10 a.m. in Imani Temple 49 is located at 201 East Willow Street, Lafayette, Louisiana. And if you want some uh, more information about that, just give me a call, and I'll be happy to get that information to you. Uh, testimonies. Uh, testimonies tonight, we have actually a, mu a musical testimony, a video produced by a young man that uh, actually uh, is related to me. He's married to one of my cousins, and that young man is uh, Reverend uh, John C. Bryant. So let's get right into his testimony. Prosper what you have to be in the will of the most high. 
right, that's Minister John C. Bryant, and the selection that we heard was Lion Heart. All right, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to have the minister on the show uh, in the near future. Uh, so we're just, uh, you know, so we're looking forward to having him on the show. All right, the history of Christianity. We're going to start tonight uh, because many of our, our viewers are Christian and we read out of the Bible um, and I'll just, you know, just slow up just for a minute just to remind all of our viewers that this is not a Christian show. Uh, this show is not promoting any particular religion. Uh, the society, the organization that produces this show is interdenominational. And for those of you that might not know what that means, it means that it doesn't matter uh, what religion you are, whether you're Catholic, Baptist, uh, Jewish, Muslim, uh, agnostic, atheist, it doesn't matter. Uh, the purpose of this show is to deliver the message that God is almighty. There's a being that is indeed almighty. Uh, but the reality of it is that many of our viewers are Christian. That being the case, we need to know a little bit about what that religion is. And it's kind of, uh, kind of like being in a family and not really knowing the history of your family, you know, not knowing how it is that your family got to the place where it is. So we're going to study a little bit about the, not a little bit, we're going to study quite a bit about the history of Christianity, and we're going to go all the way back, all the way back to the beginning of the religion that came to be named Christianity. Now, there's a lot of debate about uh, Christianity, uh, and there are a number of, of theologians, a number of scholars, that really do not identify the birth of Jesus Christ as being the beginning of the religion that we now call Christianity. Okay, so the, the, the term, the name Christianity developed after the death of Jesus Christ, but the religion that encompasses Christianity, actually many scholars, many theologians have identified that that religion existed prior to the birth of Jesus Christ. And as we've studied on this show, uh, when we read through the Bible itself, the Bible has hints that there was a religion that existed, and I'm not talking about Judaism, there was a religion that existed before Jesus Christ was born and that Jesus Christ was actually a minister in that religion. And for those of you that have watched this show, uh, you may recall we read through the Bible uh, when we read about Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. And there was a religion that John the Baptist was a part of, and that John the Baptist actually had disciples that helped him with his ministry, and John's ministry was not the ministry of the Jewish people. He had a distinct ministry that included the ceremony of baptism, and we recall reading about Jesus Christ how Jesus Christ went to his cousin and was baptized by his cousin. Okay, so 
there's some evidence in the scriptures itself that there was a movement, a religion that existed before that movement, that religion morphed or developed into what is now called Christianity. But let's go uh, in all of the information or most of the information that we will be uh, reading about and talking about and studying. Most of that is coming off the web and off of the site, the Wikipedia site, okay, Wikipedia. And if you go, uh, if you want to follow along, uh, you just go to Wikipedia and uh, type in History of Christianity, and you will have the text that I'll be reading from. Now, we'll be, you know, adding a little bit here and there, but primarily the information will be coming from Wikipedia and uh, the history of Christianity. Uh, now, these are some of the things, and it said we, we will actually be studying this and discussing this. This discussion, this study, should last us through Christmas. So for the next two and a half months, during our religious uh, spiritual discussion session, we will be di discussing the history of Christianity, and that's very, uh, very much fitting that we're studying this leading up to the celebration, the holiday of Christmas. So some of the things that we will be, uh, some of the topics that we will be studying, we'll be studying starting off with early Christianity, and that's around the years of 31 or 33 A.D. to 324 A.D. And as you all, uh, some of you know that you've studied your Bibles, you know that that year 31 to 33 that's usually the time that most theologians, most scholars say that Christ started his ministry when he's about 31 to 33 years old. Uh, and so that early Christianity, that'll run uh, through the years, all the way through the years of 324 A.D. And the main topic in that will be the apostolic church, the apostolic church. And for those of you, again, that may not be aware, apostolic church uh, means the church uh, existing during the time of the apostles. Then we'll study a little bit about the early Christian beliefs and creeds. Uh, that'll be encompassing the post-apostolic church after all apostles are dead. Uh, then we'll go into Christianity during late antiquity, and that'll be the years 313 to 476. And some of the subtopics will be the establishment of Roman orthodoxy, Arianism and the first ecumenical councils, Christianity as Roman state religion, Nestorianism and the Sassanian Empire, Miaphysitism, and monasticism. Uh, we'll go into the early Middle Ages, Western missionary expansion, the Byzantine iconoclasm, uh, the high Middle Ages, Carolean Renaissance, the monastic reform, investiture controversy, uh, so this is, I'm not going to read all of them. As you can see, there are many topics that we will uh, discuss. Some of you may recognize the Crusades. Okay, that's something that you see a lot about and see a lot of movies about that. Uh, Eastern Orthodox Captivity, the Fall of Constantinople, the Middle Ages and the Early Renaissance, John Wycliffe and John House, and we're going into number nine there, the Reformation. John Luther, the Reformation, Protestant Reformation, Counter-Reformation, the Church and the Enlightenment, uh, the Trial of Galileo. Some of you may be aware that the Church actually condemned uh, Galileo because he taught science, and some of the science that he taught uh, was contrary to the Church's teachings. And we'll go into early modern era, that's 1720 to 1906, and we'll conclude with the modern area, the modern Eastern Orthodoxy, ecumenism, uh, and the Pentecostal movement. So we're going to have a, a real, uh, real in-depth discussion and study of the history of Christianity. Uh, so we're going to tonight, tonight we're going to discuss just a, a little bit about early Christianity, and that's the period of 31, 33 A.D. to 324 A.D., and 
we're going to begin our discussion with the apostolic church. Now, just I'm just going to read a little bit something off before we get into the apostolic church. It's the history of Christianity concerns the Christian religion, Christendom, and the church with its various denominations from the first century to the present. Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Christianity spread to all of Europe in the Middle Ages. Since the Renaissance area, Christianity has expanded throughout the world and become the world's largest religion. Today, there are more than 2 billion Christians worldwide. Now remember, at the beginning of every, of every uh, show, we read out of Thessalonians, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So these statements of fact are coming from the Wikipedia website. I invite all of you to check it out, do your own fact checking, fact checking. and if you, uh, if you find out that anything that we read or say here on this show is inaccurate, it's not correct, please call in. Please call in and uh, let us know so that we can do our best to get accurate, correct information out to the public. So now we're going to talk about the Apostolic Church. And the Apostolic Church, I know that's a, that's a fuzzy map, but the Apostolic Church, uh, it kind of shows, it kind of shows uh, the spread of the Christian church. And where you see, uh, you see my pointer, you see my pointer moving around there uh, to the right of your screen. Uh, those areas there, uh, that's Antioch, and Tarsus. And for those of you that know a little bit about your Bible, you'll know that Paul uh, wrote in the uh, New Testament about letters going to the bishops at Antioch, Tarsus. Uh, there's Galatia, Ephesus, Colossia. Oh, yeah, isn't there? There's some books in the Bible that's called Ephesians huh? and Colossians. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that's the area of that early Christianity. All right. Uh, the, uh, the apostolic church. Well, let's let's back up even a little bit further than that. And I'm just going to read out of this. Uh, during its early history, Christianity grew from a first century Jewish following to a religion that existed across the entire Greco-Roman world and beyond. Okay, so that Greco-Roman world, there's Rome, okay, and then we come up with Greece. So the Greco-Roman world and beyond started out over here, right, spread westward, right? Uh, early Christianity may be divided into two distinct phases, the apostolic period, when the first apostles were alive and led the church, and the post-apostolic period, when an early episcopal structure developed. Okay, so what this is telling us is that and when we read through the scriptures, particularly when we read through the New Testament, the uh, Acts of the Apostles, when we read through there, it tells us and it describes the early church, okay? It describes what was going on with the early church. It describes uh, how, the, uh, how the early church developed. And when we read about uh, the apostle Paul uh, sending out these letters, organizing the church, making sure that every branch in these different cities uh, were on the same page, okay? So that's where they talk about the apostolic period. And then after the apostles were gone, the development of the church, how you had different bishops in different areas, and we're going to study all of that. And not only did you have different bishops in different areas, but the different bishops in the different areas had different doctrines. Okay, some believed in the Trinity, Okay, the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Some did not believe in that, didn't preach that, didn't teach that. Some believed that Jesus Christ was co-equal with his Father, God Almighty. 
Some did not believe that. There were actually internal wars, whereas Christians killed each other to determine what would be the final official teachings and doctrines of the church. So we're going to go into all of that. And, and again, you know, a lot of folks profess, confess to be Christians, but they really don't know the history of Christianity. They, they really don't know. When they go to church and they say prayers, they really have no idea about how those prayers developed. When they read the Bible and read the New Testament, they really don't have any idea about how that Bible developed. So we're going to go into, uh, you know, they said knowledge is power. We're going to go into studying some of those things tonight. Uh, but before we do, we're going to, uh, well, actually, let me read just a couple more sentences, and then we're going to take just a, a brief break. Uh, as I said, the, okay, the Roman Okay, early Christianity may be divided into two distinct phases, the apostolic period, when the first apostles were alive and led the church, and the post-apostolic period, when an early Episcopal structure developed and persecution was periodically intense. The Roman persecution of Christians ended in A.D. 324 when Constantine the Great decreed tolerance for the religion. He then called the First Council of Nicaea in A.D. 325, beginning the period of the first seven ecumenical councils. Okay, the ecumenical councils. And I, before we take a break, just a little bit, a little bit discussion about what we read. Uh, Constantine the Great was a Roman emperor, and something we're going to we're going to learn a little bit more about is that you. I just read that at one point in time, uh, up until the year 300, the Christians were persecuted. But then all of a sudden, sudden, something happened. They weren't persecuted anymore. And they weren't persecuted because of the orders of Emperor Constantine. Now, something that when you do a little bit more digging, a little bit more studying, and you hear folks talk about, well, uh, Emperor Constantine was a great guy because he stopped the persecution of the Christians. And you hear about him being converted to Christianity. Well, when you do a little bit more studying, a little bit more digging, what you find out is that Constantine, the emperor of Rome, was actually in a very heated, very intense political battle had nothing to do with religion. He was in a political battle. A political battle for his emperor's position. And one thing that helped him, that helped him to be victorious in his political battle was he was able to have the Christians sign up to back him. Now guess what? It's kind of like it's kind of like what's going on today. You see, Constantine was about to lose his position. And he had to have more people on his side to help him to win. So one group of people that he went and talked to and cut a deal with was the folks that were called the Christians. And he said, look, if y'all back me, help me hold on to my position of power, I'm going to pass a law that will stop people from persecuting you, stop people from treating you bad. And the Christians said, that's a good deal. And they signed up and they backed Constantine. And then the next thing you know, not only 
was it legal to be a Christian? But the next thing that happened was that Christianity not only became an accepted religion, but it became a religion that was promoted, promoted, backed by the Roman emperor. So that's kind of like behind the scenes information there. But that's politics and religion, the mingling, the intermingling, the intertwining of politics and religion. And because Christianity had the backing now of the emperor, Christianity was able to grow and able to flourish. And what the government did, what Constantine did, look, we just read that. He said the period of the first ecumenical councils Constantine stood back and he said, look, this underground religion, Christianity, it started over there around Jerusalem. And now it spread all the way over here into Greece and Rome. And Constantine said, look, that's a lot of folks. A lot of folks. But they, they really kind of disorganized. And if I can step in and help organize them, and while I'm helping to organize them with their religious message, if I can slip in a little bit of my political views, then that's going to be a great base of power. Now, it, it's kind of like what we're going through now here in America. When we hear about the political world, with our, our president and how he has tapped into the religious world with the evangelicals and how a lot of the political experts are of the opinion that it's the evangelicals that helped the current president to get into office. Again, that intermingling of politics and religion. Nothing new. So we're talking about the year 2018, but we're reading about that happened more than 1,500 years ago, back in the year 300, 324. Okay, so that intermingling. So this is... The development of Christianity, okay, they were able to cut a deal with the folks that were in power, the government that was in power, able to cut a deal, and the religion of Christianity spread. Okay, we're going to take a, a brief break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the apostolic church, and then we'll get into our words of inspiration. So we take a break, and we'll be back here on the message in just about 90 seconds here on the message. People who suffer from drug or alcohol addiction sometimes say hurtful things. They drive the people who love them most away. If you know someone who suffers from drug or alcohol addiction, listen. Try to hear what they are really saying. Know that there is hope and help them find their voice again. For drug or alcohol treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. We train to, to any environment, any situation. It could be up on a mountain, on a cliff, it could be in the ocean, it could be a dive mission, it could be out in the desert or the jungle, Arctic. 
and that's what makes us unique. The motto of the pararescuement is that others may live. When you go and you rescue these people, the look on their faces is extremely gratifying, and that's the reward in itself. I'm Captain John Fish, and very proud to be a member of the Air Force Reserve. For a free booklet on the dangers of smoking, contact the Will Rogers Institute. My name is Juliet Allen, and I've been here since 1960. And this is my home, my new home, which was replaced after Katrina and the levees failed. But all my neighbors, there are so many of them that we all lost our homes at that time. But with the Lord's help, they'll be back too, and they'll give it a try. I hope this never happens again, though. We need the 829 investigation. It's so important, our lives depend on it. Home invaders least wanted. Could you be the next victim? American cockroach spreads 33 bacteria and six parasitic worms. And I can trigger asthma attacks. <laughs> House mouse contaminates food and transmits disease. He's lying. Do I look like that kind of girl? Bed bug feeds on human blood and can cause itchy welts. Oh yeah? What are you going to do about it? Here's what. Arm yourself with the facts at pestworld.org. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. <laughs> Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. That's a periscope. <laughs> it's one of the most important gifts you can share. <laughs> Create a curious reader. Oh, you want to build a castle like that one? <laughs> This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. Yeah, but did you see how much he had to drink last night? I can't believe that guy made it home. Nobody drives drunk anymore. Hold on, I got another call coming in. Drunk driving rates have dropped greatly. Negligent driving and speeding fatalities have skyrocketed. Someone dies every 13 minutes from negligent driving, so keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, and your phone put away. Welcome back to The Message. I'm your host, Donatus King, and we're going to uh, continue our discussion about the history of Christianity, and we're going to move now uh, with a little bit of discussion, a little bit more discussion about the Apostolic Church. The Apostolic Church was a community led by the apostles and, to some degree, Jesus' relatives. Now, when I read that, I had to stop a minute and try to, you know, think about what relatives were they talking about, Jesus' relatives. So I did a little bit more research, and uh, the research that I came up with was actually something that shows that uh, Joseph had, I'm sorry, that Jesus had uh, relatives. Uh, and I'm reading this, and this information I'm reading now, this comes out of uh, a website that's Biblical Studies. You see that at the bottom of the uh, screen there. Biblical Studies .org uk forward slash article underscore relatives underscore buckham dot html. And what this is, I'm just going to uh, read a little bit out of this. Careful readers of the New Testament know that one of Jesus' relatives, his brother James, played a prominent part in the early history of the church. Not so well known is the fact that other members of the family were also important figures and continued to exercise leadership in Palestinian Jewish Christianity down to at least the early 2nd century. The family tree, and, and that's kind of hard to see on your screen right now, but it's a family tree. Uh, the family tree shows that those members of the family 
whose names and relationships to Jesus are definitely known. The four brothers of Jesus are named in the Gospels, Matthew 13, 55, and I'm going to read through that. Let's, let's read through here. Matthew chapter 13. Let me see if they're telling the truth on here. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Well, look at it. It does say that. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Jose and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then had this man all these things? All right. So this is uh, this is showing that uh, this family of of Jesus, and as you see, for those of you that can't see the screen, uh, James, Jose, Judas, those are named in the scriptures. Uh, Simon, named in the scriptures, and then they have in parenthesis as to whether or not his sister's names was Salome, uh, Salome, and Mary. Uh, you know, so that's something new for some of us as far as the history studying the history of Christianity, that, uh, you know, Jesus did have some family. And, and actually it says here, in what I'm reading, not only in Matthew 13, 55, but also in Mark. Let's see if we can find Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Is not this the common to the son of Mary, the brother of James and Jose, and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So this is, uh, you know, Jesus' family. Okay, so maybe he was not an only child. Uh, we can be sure that James was the eldest of the four, and Jose the next in age. But since Matthew and Mark differ in the order in which they list Simon and Judas, we cannot be sure which was the youngest. All right. So that's a little bit about Jesus' family, and, and this is uh, this is some pretty extensive discussion about pretty extensive discussion about Jesus' brothers and sisters. And I will uh, I'll refer you to this discussion and that website is biblicalstudies.org.uk forward slash article underscore relatives underscore buckham dot html and I know that might be kind of hard for you to get that information but you can give me a call uh, and I'll give that website to you but it's, it's very very good studying uh, and that number for me you can call me 504 821-3221. That's 504 821 We we didn't get very far. Uh, we didn't get very far tonight, but I want to get uh, we're gonna leave this religious study and we're gonna go into our words of inspiration. Words of inspiration coming out of the book of Exodus chapter two, verses fourteen. And we'll see how far we are able to to get. Let's see. All right. And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Okay, we read that scripture uh, last week uh, where Moses had uh, saw an Egyptian out there beating on a Hebrew. Moses looked around to see if anybody was watching him. He didn't see anybody watching him, so he killed the Egyptian, and then he hid the body. He thought he was home free, committed the perfect crime, uh, but the next day Moses went out, and he saw two Hebrews fighting, 
he started chastising the Hebrews for fighting with his brother. And the Hebrew came back and said, how are you going to judge me when you killed a man yesterday? You thought nobody saw you, but you're going to stand up there and try to be so righteous, criticizing me, and you're a murderer. Right? And then it says Moses became very afraid because he said, whoa, I've been found out. All right? And he said, yep, they know that I'm a murderer. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Okay? So now Moses is a fugitive. He's a murderer. Okay? He's a murderer. He's a fugitive. Pharaoh's going to kill him. They said he sought to slay Moses. He wasn't going to put him in jail. He, he sought to, to slay him. He's committed murder. Moses fled. He ran away. Okay, now this is, this is where we, uh, this is a little interesting little part here. Chapter 16, I'm sorry, verse 16. says, now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And now, what's so, what's so interesting about that verse? It looks like we, in these scriptures, somehow or another, is always some kind of religious leader involved. Of, always some kind of religious leader involved. See, we, we read before, going all the way back to Abraham, when Abraham is traveling. And we read about how Abraham had an encounter with Melchizedek. Okay. Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High. And then we just, we just finished reading. We just finished reading a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, just finished reading about Joseph. The Hebrew Joseph, the Jewish Joseph, who wound up not by happenstance, not by accident, but by God's master plan, Joseph the Hebrew wound up marrying the daughter of Pharaoh's priest. Just look how all these things just kind of happen. And now we're reading about Moses, who's a fugitive, who's killed a man and ran out, ran out in the desert. And who should he run into but the daughters of not just any old body, but the daughters of a Midian priest. God's got a master plan. See, those, those daughters weren't at that watering hole just by accident. Moses didn't just happen to go to that watering hole by accident. No, it was part of God's master plan. The things that are going to happen to you tomorrow, it's not by accident. It's not because of anything that you did or anybody else did. It's all part of God's master plan. Yes, God had a master plan for Joseph. God had a master plan for Moses. God has a master plan for you. And my prayer, as I close my prayer as always, no matter what God's master plan has, in store for you, 
tomorrow. It's my prayer that that plan includes for you, no matter whatever it is that you're going through, that plan includes for you peace. May God Almighty bless you and yours with peace.